Do you eat meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner almost every day? Hi, I'm Bernice Hunt, and I am a brain health specialist. I work with women just like you who are starting to notice a few memory challenges, and I help you to stay sharp so that as you age, you can still travel, have fun with your grandkids, and experience new adventures without missing a beat. As a wellness coach for over 12 years, I've talked to a lot of people that are talking about cutting back on meat. And usually they decide on a kind of meat to cut back on. Most of often it's usually um, red meat or beef or something. They decide they're not going to eat that regularly anymore, but they still are eating meat. Did you catch my last video? I had a video a few days ago about less meat more lentils and it was talking about plant-based program pro program plant-based protein so if you didn't catch that video it's still on my youtube channel and it's on um, my um, facebook page keep your brain sharp so you can go and you can catch that there that was a short little video but tonight i wanted to talk more about the advantages and disadvantages of eating meat and also a compromise that you may want to consider. So that's what we're going to get into tonight. Okay. So, okay. So there are actually advantages to eating meat. Number one advantage is eating meat gives you a one stop shop for complete protein. You eat meat, you're automatically going to get a lot of protein. And that's one reason why a lot of people eat meat, not the reason, maybe the second most important reason they eat meat. The first um, primary reason that most of us eat meat is because we like how it tastes. Mm -hmm. So tell the truth and shame the devil. You love you some meat. That's why you eat meat. But also you tell me that it's because you want to make sure you're getting your protein. So, okay, so that is an advantage. You can get a complete protein when you eat meat. All the essential um, protein amino acids that you need are in, included when you eat meat. So that's a definite advantage. Another advantage of eating meat is that it's less prep time. It's more readily available because in this day and age, we don't have to go out and shoot the, the cow or shoot the cow, shoot the buffalo or whatever it is. We don't have to, you know, uh, strip the, the, the skin off them and do all that kind of stuff. We don't have to cure the thing ourselves. We don't have to do all that work, cut up the slice. So we go right into the store and we get it all packaged neatly, washed clean, skinless if you want and all that kind of stuff you just go in and you just fry it up or whatever you want to do or even better for some of you, you just go through that drive through and get whatever you want or go to that restaurant so it's readily available to the point that people are eating steak for breakfast and steak you know all this kind of stuff because meat is so plentiful and so easy to get okay so it's less prep time involved in that another advantage of meat is that you don't have to worry about blood sugar you know that diabetes is out there and, and it's epidemic proportions and everybody and everybody's cousin are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. You know, and we all have to work or should be looking at our blood sugar. But with meat, you're not worried about that glycemic load. You don't have to worry about that when you're eating meat. Okay. Another advantage of meat is that it makes you feel good. It has that umami taste sense in there that makes you feel satisfied and full and has that feel good feeling to it. And so you want to eat that meat because you feel better when you eat that meat. So those are all good reasons why people eat meat. And I get it. I get it, especially the protein thing, because I know even with my husband, Oliver, and um, he was um, vegan for a, a while, for a long while. And then I put him back on meat because, you know, he, he didn't look like he was getting enough protein. He was looking kind of frail and he was kind of slow and more inactive and all that. I said, you know, you need to start eating, put some meat back in your diet. And so we did. We put meat back in his diet and he got some pep in his step and he felt better and all of this kind of thing because he was getting the protein that he needed. So I get it. I get why people are eating meat and, and rightly so in those cases. And so another thing, if you have older, um, relatives, you know, that, that are looking frail and things, one thing you should check on is how much protein is in their diet. Because as you age, you need more protein. As it is, you should be getting like half your body weight in, in, in um, grams and protein. But as you age, you may need even more because we don't absorb it as 
efficiently as we used to. So you need to make sure, especially if they're looking frail or weak or inactive or whatever, make sure that you up their, their protein and their water so they're, if they're getting those things that they need. And also athletic people, now some of them go way overboard with that, but you know, you do need a little bit more. So those are all advantages to eating meat and I get it. I get it. I get it. I put my husband back on it, even though we had been vegan for quite some time. So, um, there are reasons why, but also you need to know that eating meat as often as we do, I don't want to gross you guys out, but eating meat and giving your dog and having dog food for your dog have something in common. Eating meat and dog food have something in common. And I was thinking about it and it's one of the things that I thought about was the fact that Initially, they both began with status symbol. They were both a symbol of status, of how wealthy or well-to-do you were. It was when dog feet came out, because, you know, way back in the day, the dog, they, the dogs ate the scraps off the table. You know, that's the food they ate. They ate what you ate, right? Or they didn't eat. That's <laughs> simple as that. But then dog food came into play and those dry pellets or those canned foods or whatever came into play. And the only people that could afford it initially were people that were well to do. They could afford it. And that became a status syndrome, sim, a status symbol if you bought dog food for your dog and they didn't have to eat scraps. They got dog food, you know? Likewise, meat was not an everyday, regular, every meal type of thing either, unless you were well to do. If you had the money to afford the meat, then you would have meat on a regular basis. And so that became a status symbol also. And people aspired to have meat on a regular basis at every meal or at least once a day or whatever. But if you weren't, if you didn't have the money, then guess what? You were plant based. You ate, you know, meat was a rarity. We, we, meat was something to be coveted. It was a treat or whatever. And that was back in the day. And now when as things became more affordable and more readily available, now it came to be affordable for everyone. And now we all think that we got to have meat every day. But now look at the dogs. You know, they're going back to real food, getting off that dry pellet stuff and that canned stuff and going back to real food. Because guess what? They don't have to have dog food. They need real food, okay? And same thing with us. We, we, the, when we are, people are eating years ago, they didn't have meat every day. And guess what? They survived. It wasn't a necessity. It was more of a luxury. They survived. And now some researchers are telling us now that may not be a bad thing to not have meat every day, not have meat at every meal. I'm not saying to throw, throw meat out because I know that would be hurt, harmful for a lot of people, but moder moderation, back off some of that thing may not be a bad idea. Okay, so let's talk about the disadvantages of meat because there are some of those as well. One disadvantage of meat is that it can be high in saturated fat. As you guys know, you, a lot of people tell me about they have lean cuts. They're starting to get lean cuts of meat because they know they don't need all the saturated fat that is embedded in that and because that is not healthy for them. It's the wrong kind of fat, okay? So it can be high in saturated fat. Another thing, though, which is a really biggie is in terms of the processed meat, okay? Because it can also um, increase your risk of cancer because it has cancer com cancer causing compounds in there and also heart disease. Okay, so you're going to have um, issues with meat that is processed. And here's the deal, guys. Unfortunately, a lot of the meat that people are eating is processed meat. Unfortunately, when people are making sandwiches, they're not um, baking the chicken or, or roasting the turkey or whatever, unless it's Thanksgiving, and slicing that off and making sandwiches actually off of off the leftovers that they were eating. 
They are going to the store and getting lunch meat. They're getting deli meats, even chicken and turkey deli meats, okay? They're getting cooking bacon. They're cooking um, hot dogs and sausages and pepperoni and salami, canned ham, smoked meats, you know, all those processed things. And guys, you know what? Processed is processed, okay? It's not good for you because it has those nitrates in them and stuff. And it also um, is cancer-causing and also has damages your heart. You don't want it. I don't care if it is turkey. I don't care if it is chicken. If it's processed, I don't care if it is ham. If it's processed, if it's canned, if it's smoked, you don't want to make that part of your lifestyle, of your regular things that you eat and try to avoid those if possible because those can bills are damaging. And that's what's going on with a lot of our meat. It's becoming processed. We're eating way too much processed meat. The other thing is in terms of your omegas, just like with humans, you know, our omegas, sixes and threes are way off balance. Okay. Omegas with um, meats, you know, uh, Grain-fed animals are way off also, just like ours is sometimes 20 to 1 in terms of omega-6 and omega-3. Theirs can be 20 to 1 also. They said it was from 9 to 1 to 20 to up to 20 to 1 for omega-6 versus omega-3. Way off balance if you're eating grain-fed. And so you really need to be careful what kind of meat you're eating, if it's grain-fed or grass-fed, okay? So that is also a problem and a disadvantage when you're talking about meat, all right? So we're talking about uh, high, your cooking processes too. Even if you're buying your meat and cooking it at home, how are you cooking it? Because the high heat also creates problems for your body in terms of trans fats, in terms of um, ages, which is... Um, um, damaging to you, premature causes premature aging to occur um, in your body and all of that because of the temperature, the high temperature that you're putting the meat through. So even if you may have gotten the meat, you know, uh, even if you got the meat grass-fed or whatever from the store, once you went and started cooking the wrong way, frying it or smoking it or whatever, you have just created a problem for your health, okay? So the cooking method also has to do with it. And also, of course, the, the impact that it has on the planet with, with, with the um, environment also plays a part as well. So there are some definite disadvantages to eating meat. So here's my deal here. So is there some kind of compromise? Is there something we can do here with regarding our, our meat? Because I know a lot of people are going to say, you know what, I'm not about to give up my meat, okay? And I understand that. But let's talk about how you can have both uh, the best of both worlds. Okay. All right. So number one, the kind of meat you're eating, if you're going to eat your meat. It needs to be grass fed. Okay. Grass fed, not the grain farm raised type of thing. Grass fed meat or we're talking eggs. It should be your pastured eggs where your chickens are actually going out there and getting their own food, you know, out on, you know, outside getting their food, you know, that, that, like they normally do. You know, or it needs to be um, fish that are less contaminated, like your smash fish. I use an acronym fat, smash, to remember the kinds of fish that you want to eat. You want to eat the sardines and the anchovies and the mackerel and then the wild, wild Alaskan um, salmon and your herring. You want to eat those kind of fish that have less contamination to them. So watch the kind of meat you eat. If you're not going to eat grass-fed uh, meats and pastured meats and organic, you know, Meats, and you need to know that you're damaging yourself. That's not what you want to do. If you, rather than damage yourself, then just say no. Just stay away from it then, okay? So eat those kinds of meats. Also, you want to eat in moderation. The researchers are telling us that you do not have to eat meat every meal. You do not have to eat meat every day, especially when you're eating Processed meats are small, are cooking them the wrong way kind of things. You need to back off that and go for your meatless Mondays or your, you know, um, once a, once a, once a day type of thing or however you want to do it. Plan to do it however you want to do it. It could be, you know, that you're not going to eat meat, meat during the week and only eat on the weekends or however you want to do, do you for how you want to set up a plan, but do so 
in moderation where it's not every day. Or you can use it as a condiment or as a topping, you know, use strips of it in your, in your dishes and stuff. And instead of making it the main dish, making it half your plate, you know, make the vegetables and fruits half your plate and put, um, the meat as a side dish, you know, or not even every, every meal kind of thing. So eat it in moderation. And if you are eating it in moderation, then it's going to help you offset the fact that you're paying more for the grass fed or paying more for the pastured eggs or are those kind of things that you're going to need to do. But if you're not eating it every day, you know, or at every meal, it's going to offset that pricing for you. So that's actually going to help you out. And I know before I leave, I want to talk about fake meat for a while because I know a lot of people are getting into the, um, what is it called? Beyond Burger and Impossible Burgers, those kind of things where they're using the, the fake meat instead of the real meat. And here's the thing I need to say about that, because guess what, guys? It's processed. And overall, I don't care what food group you're, you're talking about, you want to limit your processed products. And that fake meat is processed as well. So it has chemicals and salt and all those kind of things to help preserve it. And so you need to keep that in mind and not make that a staple in your life. Not say, okay, I'm going to eat the, 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 um, Beyond Burger meat for, use that for my meat. Not every day you're not. Hopefully not every week you're not. You know, but however you're going to do it, you're still going to do it. Even if you're using that, you're going to still use that in moderation or maybe even better to go for the grass fed and eat the meat less often than go with the impossible fake meats kind of thing. And have that every day because this process is not good for your body. Okay, so we need you to touch on that. All right, so just want you to know also that there's no need to make an all or none decision about meat. Either you're going to like, I'm going to not, I'm going to eat all the meat I want to eat or I'm not going to eat any meat. There is a compromise that you can do, you know, and this you can just figure out what works for you. Like I said with my husband Oliver, he eats meat now. He doesn't eat it. Every day, he doesn't eat, of course, the red meat. You know, he eats mostly the salmon or the um, uh, grass-fed chicken, you know, and pastured eggs he eats. But not still not every day and not definitely not every meal and not the processed kinds of meats that we were talking about. Okay, so create something that works for you and then work that something that's sustainable that you can continue doing, okay, and that will be best for you. So if you want a, uh, I have a little handout that has, um, like the seven reasons, you know, on why you should eat meat, the seven reasons why you shouldn't eat meat, seven, seven reasons why you should or shouldn't eat plants, those kind of things, just so you can see the pros and cons for that. I have that in my research library. That's available to you if you go on my website, um, keepyourbrainsharp.com and get, you can get access to that, free access to that, and then just print that out if you'd like. This is video number 198. Where's the meat? And I hope you take advantage of that and make a decision of some sort to create a plan for yourself in terms of how you're going to compromise with meat because your brain's destiny is in your hands.